Morning, everybody. It's uh, Breakfast with the Master. It is the 30th of January. Yahoo. Year's almost over. Um, just a quick, uh, just a quick comment. Some of you might have remembered a year ago, when uh, or so, when uh, Obama was implementing the quote-unquote Volcker plan, which uh, the discussions began, I don't know, 25 or 30 years ago, and I was one of the people that was interviewed because our risk profile as an institution was five or ten times higher than anybody else in the United States. And um, in the, the Fed and the Treasury, in the worst way, wanted to re rein in our risk. And um, so they were looking for a way to do it. And so there were lots of meetings, and it wasn't going anywhere. And out of the blue, of course, uh, Obama trotted out this old testimony and decided that he was going to fix the banking system. And if you pay attention to what's going on in China and a couple other countries, this minute, right now, legislation that's being proposed, it looks starkly like what Obama put in place. And I'm going to tell you right now, I said this a year or two ago, so I'm not saying this now, I said it when he said that he was going to put it in place. This will make bank and institutional returns more volatile, not less volatile. It'll make them less profitable, not more profitable. And it'll make it more likely that they are to fail whenever there's a problem because the markets will be much thinner, much, much more illiquid. And they will still be caught with customer positions. So, good luck with that, buddy. I'm not particularly a Republican or Democrat because I don't really like any of them. But, uh, <laughs> I, it's one of the worst pieces of legislation Frank Dodd ever written. You know, ever written. One of the worst. Um, I remember when they got, I was, you know, active in helping get get rid of Glass-Steagall and they should if they wanted to do this they should have just put Glass-Steagall in the flip back into place but doing this um, not gonna hurt me makes people more reliant on me makes it much easier for me to corner a market and hurt people in the gold market for example but why they why they did this and why they continue to do this is a mystery to me but uh, um, now other places Far socialist or communist, not even middle socialist, are now putting things like this in place. And uh, it ought to tell you where this country is at at the moment in terms of thinking. And it ain't too bright. Just one man's opinion. And I like to stay away from politics. This isn't politics. This is, this is, you know, I think I'll be alive long enough. That's up to Dr. Gary. Um, that I'll see the problems coming from this. But certainly my children will see the problems, and your children. It's not good for this country, as a, especially as the bastion of uh, economic freedom. So, anyway. Today we're going to talk about um, just exactly what's on the, on the poster. Deadly, but beautiful. Or beautiful, but deadly. Any way you want to say it. Okay, um, there are times where you just nail a trend. Anybody ever do that? Only BJ? You're, only BJ and Pat are the only one? Oh, okay. And BJ, you got my email, right? Hi, Rebecca. Okay, I figured Rebecca got one, or two, or five, or a hundred. <clears throat> um, the danger you got nailed a few times mm, you, I don't think John's alone in that how about you guys missed the question beautiful but deadly there are times when you do nail a move you ever nail a move Petra 
Just see it, grab it. Thank you. Jose has. Petra, you never have. Okay. Well, keep going. We'll get you. Then the inverse occurs. Well, not lately. Well, we'll fix you, Dawn. It's okay. Do you mean, Rebecca, that it nails you, or do you mean that it snaps back and you don't catch it? Okay. Now, I've talked about um, and, and I'm not talking out of school. Shane like Shane often gets caught on that secondary move back up that pendulum pullback. You've heard me say that before. Even though he knows the big move is coming back to the downside, but it's, you know, 100 and some points and he just can't can't keep his hands off of it. And then when the big move does unfold, he just can't snag it. Okay, thanks, Pat. Um, do you understand what I mean? He's still tangled in the snapback. Okay, he's doing it less and less, but still. And it is a tendency. Um, I don't know if you want to call it the Superman tendency or whatever, but you can see the big picture, but you don't want to leave the, the fives and tens li lying on the table while you're going for the hundred. So you... You're reaching over to pick up the fives and tens, and then you, you turn around and you go, God damn it, there goes the hundred. Okay? So we're going to talk about, boy, when you're really in tune with the market, there are traders that are bi-directional. I struggle with knowing the chip shots versus the bigger moves. Yeah, Don, it's kind of over. I don't know if this is a, this is chipish. It's in that area. It might be a touch longer, but it's the basic idea. Um, there are times when you are just so locked into a particular market that you catch the down move. And if you're bi-directional, you either catch the up move and you catch the down move. You know? But it is beautiful but deadly because if, if you make, I mean, literally a one-bar mistake, you will, you will, the whole thing will unravel. Okay? You will get completely out of step and at that point you have to know to pull the plug and walk away does everybody follow me there's a risk to playing the pullbacks and very few people are talented enough and you're skating on thin ice so you're going to watch me try and skate on thin ice here today. I'll show you the big move, and I caught the big move. And I'll show you the move after, and I caught that. Can you guys hear that? Hang on. What the? I don't know what the hell it was. But it was damn annoying. Sounds like, sounds like Keith Jarrett good friend, but I'm not sure why it's playing on my computer. Okay, I guess Kevin's coming over today. Anyway, hopefully we won't get another visit from Keith. Well, I can't say ghost because he's not dead. A long... A long anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. Alright, so let's 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 go to market work and hopefully we won't be hearing any more music. Although that was a nice piece of music. Alright, so this is the big move down, the termination of a big move down. You can go back and look at it yourself. Well, I'll squeegee it in. Okay? It's beautiful. No worries. Okay? So we're left with this. This is the move breaking up. Okay? We get a break the second high. We get a pullback. You guys have sound with me? Anybody else? Okay. I just wondered if it was related to the music. All right. I'm just checking. All right. So we had a big move down. Now we've taken out the second high. Still within the frequency, but you can see it's not particularly fun to be short. I'm already out, but 
this is like prop wash behind a boat and you're looking for the next move okay you've captured this one we're out of the way that's the good news we're not playing for this that's good that's smart there that ended up being good this is smart enough not to play with this mess this one, maybe there was some money to be made, I don't know, didn't play it. Okay, so we come down, we need, we leave a high, flirting with lows, leave a lower high. Okay, we just had this big move down. What do you think's going on in people's minds? We've been talking about this lately. What do you think's been going on right now? Hmm. Not what I was looking for, but yeah, sure. Looking for longs, picking bottoms, maybe. What else? Boredom. How about that? And also, yeah, is the move over? Or maybe they're yeah, maybe they're smoking a cigar and the move and they're resting, Gary. Yeah. Smoking moxa <laughs> and resting. <laughs> but a lot of times boredom sets in and that's when the you know the rats start to leave the ship and then you can see them chipping away at this downward line of force, right? But we haven't done any damage yet. We're leaving we're even leaving a lower high. Boredom or impatience. Same thing. Come on, give me some more money. You know, I've waited. Look, I've waited 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 bars, 16 20 minute bars. Somebody do the math for me. And uh, we ain't going anywhere. Come on. I got this big position on, short from up here. So, you know, this guy takes his profit. Nothing happens. This guy takes his profit. Settles back down. This guy takes his profit, closes on his low. Now they're not sure what to do. Or maybe some people in here are picking bottoms. But there's a little bit of buying on, going on in here. And you can see the cascade has now started to be stretched. Nothing's been broken, but it's now started to be stretched. Can you see it? All right, so... New low, lowest close of the move. What's your impression of the board players that exit on coils like that? Oh, they've got a lot of money. I mean, they might have a reason. Maybe they've got a maybe they've got a measurement. Remember, I exited over here at about this price, but I kind of like to exit while it's you know moving hot and fast. Uh, what's my oh impression of the board players that exit on coils? Percentage, ah, 50, 60 maybe, maybe more. Rebecca, how are you willing to sit there for 16, 17 bars when it does nothing? After it's made a big, nice, fat move? Or are you more likely to say, you know what, I don't need this anymore. I got, uh, let's, look, let's look at this. I've got uh, 85 pips in this. Only if the data tells me to and my plan is in place. Okay, well, you're actually one of the few. How about that? Cheer up. Al says, I probably wouldn't wait. You'd probably exit. Come on, how many other people would probably exit? Or at least think about it. Probably looking for a more active market. But does that mean you'd exit, Perry? Okay, Perry's out. Only two, three people are answering? Come on, folks. It's going to make this a long presentation if I have to drag it out of you. Abdu says, I'm staying with my plan. Good. Don says, I'm in. Jose says, wait for more bars. Okay. Okay. I guess it depends on how I've done on my previous trades. You can't live or die on your previous trades. Just a comment for you to think about. All right. Everybody's thought about it. So let's see. Then we make a new low. So you, you breathe a sigh of relief. Those of you that stayed in. Okay? If you got out, 
don't don't take any emotional heat just forget about it you're out 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 is out which means you shouldn't be worrying about it anymore leave a low but we close on our high so let's draw on our advanced multi pivot line Oh, now if I was short I probably wouldn't be worried about that very minor high but I would be worried about the cascade being dragged out so I'd be a little itchy yeah I'd be tightening stops now I've already taken my profit it's at this level but it's over there to the left off of these lines but you know if you caught this short it's a nice hundred points but the cascade now has broadened we haven't really taken anything out yet but it doesn't exactly look the same and feel the same anymore does it if you can feel this stuff and not be in the happy happy main a new low camp which is what probably 85 percent of the market is in Instead, if you can feel, yeah, it's made a new low, but this thing is broadening out, and I'm not sure that it's in the same mood that it was. This is what a boom boom is able to take care of. He can feel it. He can smell it. Even though it's making a new low, he's got an inclination of where it may lead. And I'm not suggesting you should be able to do that. I'm not even suggesting you should try. But people have asked me about boom boom. I'm just pointing it out. Okay. This is a boom boom bar. Okay. All right. So, and there, we're going to see several today. We're, we're even going to watch me catch a boom boom bar. How about that, L? Which is kind of rare. All right. So, we pop up. Now we've broken something. Now, if you're going to catch the up move, most like most people would like some confirmation, maybe even a break up in here before they play with the upside. Correct? How many people would would like confirmation? So it's almost unanimous. So let's see what we get. See, I'd be more inclined to be looking for an entry on this first pullback. Maximum excursion. That's why I invented maximum excursion. Which is really the AC of a modified shift to the upside. In a certain sense. Okay, now we've taken out another high and left another advanced multi-pivot line but people are still looking for confirmation right and on my best day I'd like to get in here let's just pardon me I'll tell you what Gary a Chinese food from Beijing to kill me last night. And what she did. And we bo we both go there. It's a wonderful restaurant. I don't mean it that way, but same dishes. See, I'd much rather play off a bar like this. and its implications this is boom boom right here boom boom at his finest let's color what color should we make boom boom how about green for money all right so Now we're coming up. Leave a high. Well, yeah, and again, he never charted. 
he was amazed that I would bother because I had the same um, brokers that he did, you know, calling out prices all the time. And he acted on that, but, you know, I he thought, you know, charts were a crutch. And, and you know, maybe that's why I'm late. We retest our multi-pivot line. Retest it, retest it. Pull back away, retest it, retest it. Retest it. They ain't giving up easy. Retest it. Retest it. Look at them banging on it. Bang, bang, bang. Now, a lot of boredom going on. Whether you're long or short. Or if you're waiting for confirmation to get long or short. Let me fix this. Sorry, I had very little time to clean things up this morning because... I had a lot, a lot of, a lot of gardening to do, so to speak. All right, it holds. Retesting the highs. You guys are still looking for confirmation. How's that for confirmation? But that was 90 points to get your confirmation. Yeah, Susan so says good, but would it feel like they missed the move now? Right. So I'm trying to, I'm constantly trying to push you guys to the other side of the trade. I like to break above before this one, before the lateral move. Uh, here? Here? Next one forward. Right in when we when we broke up and then went lateral. Okay. So this one does it for Gary. Then are you trying to buy in this area? I don't have any lines for you, and this isn't if the stop works. Okay. And this isn't where we're what we're gonna we're actually not even gonna tr trade the next move. But I want you to understand it. Okay, so let's see now. So that that confirmation would have cost you 90 pips if you wanted all of that. So let's see what we do here. We got this high. Eek. I don't remember if I marked this, but if I didn't, let's mark it just in case I didn't. What do you think of that bar? How many times have you seen that? Yeah. So the problem with paying for all this confirmation is you don't have any edge unless you can buy below here, and that's expensive. It does not look like a boom boom entry had a good stop loss. Uh, I'm not suggesting that he would have got in. Uh, Bob, I was just showing you a bar, but he might have taken, he had 100 pips, he might have just taken his money. He's a, he was a very active intraday trader, Bob. He would, he would take overnight positions, but very active intraday trader looking for significant moves to the one side or the other. Okay? And lots of times he would make the bottom or make the top. So I'm not, we're really not trying to discuss boom boom. I'm just I'm just pointing out. I'm trying to give you some intuition. That's all. You can go back and look at it and say, and see for yourself why I think it was something he might have sussed out. Might not have taken the trade, but something he might want. This looks like a turn to me. Okay, so now pain wash. What do you think? follow through
no follow through. Okay, back to retest the advanced multi pivot line. Test it again, but nice close. Starting to pull away from it. I have a sense this is the correction before the flowering. Okay. Just remember that. Everybody remember that L right here. Let's let's write that. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. moment higher low new multi pivot line triple bottoms quadruple bottoms holding 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 testing the top testing the top everything's holding how many people are bored at this point Gary says, still just a rangy mess to me. Don says, I could go back and take a nap. All right. Boredom. 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 Hmm. Eating at the bottom. That's the problem with boredom. Is that you might have had the right idea, but you get, might have got bored, gotten out, and then gotten a the wake-up call, right? This is the sit-up-and-take, pay-attention call. This could also be, well, here's a, well, talk about a line in space. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Um, this is the... Dang it! I knew it was going up. How many times have you experienced that? Al, you said correction before the flowering. Once or twice, says Paul. <laughs> Correction before the flowering. Even if you had found a way to get long in here, would you got bored by here? I mean, it just doesn't feel like you. Even if you're right, it's it's hard to feel like you're getting paid when. Even though you feel this is the correction for the flowering, that's horizontal. You get a small move, that's horizontal. It's like, <sighs> that's it. I got this right, but that's it. And then, yeah. Wash the stops. Then there's pain. Now they've zoomed the upside. It'd be hard to remember the stored potential energy of a coil. Yeah, it is hard to remember that this is what makes this happen. Right? This coiling is what makes this bar happen. All of this time without price makes price without time happen. And in the moment, it's hard to remember that. You have to get it beaten into you. So this, they wash the stops of boredom out. 
anybody that was short then got the pain. And now we zoomed. Why does it happen? It's, Jose, it's physics. Time and price are, are linked. They have to come back into balance. They have to. They cannot exist without each other, and they cannot be. That's action-reaction, okay? As above, so below. So if one stretches out, whether it's time stretching to the right or price stretching straight up, eventually they'll have to catch up with each other. So if you can keep the physics, you know, alive in the back of your mind, I'm not saying you won't get caught by these bars, but you'll get caught less often by these bars because when this is happening, what will you be thinking about is, okay, when this coil terminates, all hell is going to break loose. Yeah, and it's going to explode, and I'd, I'd like to be in the right direction for the explosion. And that's the art, is you have to put together the pieces and say, okay, uh, and Al did here, this is the correction before the flowering. But, you know, the question is, Al could see it, could Al trade it? That's the hard part. That's why we're here. We're here because I want to push you further and further toward the beginning of a move, and I want you also to be able to see it and trade it. Some of you can't see it yet, and a lot of you can't trade it yet. And I'm always going to be trying to push you further and further toward the beginning of the move, then also for seeing the move, and then, of course, most importantly, being able to trade the move. Well, I'm not saying not, you're not... You're not a finished product yet, are you? BJ said, I saw this one and did not trade it. Saw it, did not take it. Okay. BJ's not a finished product either. BJ and Pat, are you? And you don't have to take every you don't have to take every move. Right? Well, you're never finished, you're correct. But you don't have to take every move. I'm gonna show you one that I took. that I shouldn't have taken, in my opinion. Okay? So we come up here. Now we're leaving a bottom. And, you know, if we're leaving a bottom, doesn't it make sense that we have to have a top? Well, that's not it. What the hell is that? Uh... I don't know how big this top is. We'll find out. I can always change it. So, okay, it's not very big at all. So let me squeegee that in. Sorry about that, guys. And it looks like we need to make this about nine. Oh, good guess. So I left the top. Now we've popped the top. Uh oh, long message. That'd be Timmy. Hey, there's one inst in institution element in that. Seeing it and sitting through it will come with some wrong positions taken and sitting through it because it doesn't go the way you thought. But in fact, you get the chair pulled out from under you. I suppose only with time will you learn the subtle clues to know the difference and be more selective. That is true. However, I will say this. There there will days when you will get the bear and days when the bears will, bears will get you. In other words, sometimes you're not going to catch this move. It's going to stop you out. Period. You're going to be on the wrong side. That's, that's just the nature of trading. So, you can't be afraid to lose. You have to be fearless. You know, I was I was lifting uh, today is my heavy day this afternoon. So la last week this day, so what whatever what is today Thursday? Yeah, last Thursday was my heavy day, and when I went to do uh, uh, 
bench presses. He he upped me by 20 pounds. And I was, I'm looking at the bar, and he said, "Hey, you own this bar. Let's go. You own this bar. Don't be afraid. You know, you know, I'm right here. If you can't pick it up, I got you spotted. It's the same thing here. You own this market. Okay. You got to go in. You got to take the trades." If you, if you get stopped out, you get stopped out. It's the nature of the beast, okay? And until you learn that, you're not going to be a good trader. You got to know when to not keep going back to the well. That'll kill you. And you got to have a stop. That's like that's like lifting without somebody spotting you, especially when you're at the edges of your ability. But by the same token, if you don't trade because you're afraid to lose, you ain't going to make any money. So, you just have to trade, period. All right, so here we get our pullback and another move up. Hey, Al, this is your flowering. What do you think? You're in charge here, buddy. Well, I'm glad to be in the trade. Okay. That's it. <laughs> what do you think up here? I'm going to give you these points. What do you think up here? If you don't know, just say, I don't know. Not sure. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to just pull back this curl which gives me my lower, this, this lower bar, this advanced multi-pivot line. I'm going to mark it. I'm real fond of maximum excursion lines. You guys know that, okay? I would be looking for resistance lines. Well, okay, David. I don't know where you'd find one. I invented this one, but if you got another one, I'd be glad to listen. Let's see what we get. Look out for double the range up here. Hmm, okay. Hadn't thought of that. Well, double the range would be here to somewhere in here. Or you could do this one. It's kind of a minor one, but you could do it if you were really in tune. Hadn't thought of that, Don. So you're in that territory, right? Okay, so let's see what we get. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Trying to make it down to this. So here we zoomed. Look. No retest. Not even a retest on our advanced multi-pivot line. Sign of what? Sign of weakness. Sign of strength. Okay, now, question for you. What are the positions? With all the up and down ranging prior, would it be safe to almost assume the pullback to be downside is imminent? Um, first answer this question, then I'll answer yours, Gary. What are all the positions here? long okay now we haven't talked about this in a long time this is like a stick figure man on one little thin leg see that hi Yixian, how you doing and so if his leg gets kicked out from under him it's ominous and I think that's kind of what Gary's saying we've got these coils but they're kind of connected by stick figures it's not continuous step by step by step. Stick figures like a gap. Yeah, it's exactly right. Very good. It's a lot like a gap. It's not a bit like a gap. Yep. Sure. That's a that's a great pickup. And we zoom we didn't retest. That's strength, but it's also 
a little bit of nervousness because in a certain sense the the charts no longer are connected right because it's like a gap Because the range was time building energy and the zoom up is the release of that energy and doesn't necessitate it coming back. In fact, I would think if there was a controlling group here, they would in fact not let it come back and it said support it in the comeback late come late to the party folks have to chase and push the strong holders positions. Alright, well let's see if that theory plays out. So we're trying to pull back, cannot pull back. New high, new high close. You've doubled your range, Don. The closing prices do give separation to the upside. What are the positions? Could you be short? I'm not talking about an entry. I'm asking you, if you were short somewhere, as these bars unfold, could you still be short at this point? Don't see it unless you're looking for lots of data. Looking at lots of data, right? I. How could you survive this? You got this, followed by no retest, followed by range extension. What the, you know? My old self, yes, and lots of pain and denial. Okay. Thank you for being frank, Tim. I mean, there are people that, they, these are the people that don't put in a stop, right? And then and they say, I'll know when to get out. And then, of course, when it's time to get out, they don't, which is right here. They don't get out. Now it's here. Now it flatlines, so they hang around. Now it's making new highs. They're lost. They're brain dead. They don't know what to do. Always use a stop, folks, or you'll have those brain dead moments, and it'll cost you lots and lots and lots of money. Okay. Make a high, pretty much close on our low. And I've got this really nice maximum excursion line. Everybody see it? Or averaging up into extinction? Thank you very little. I didn't want to think about that. All right. Right where Al says correction before the flowering. See it? This is our first significant. We had a pop low, and this is the first significant low above it, right? This is where the market stabilized. I took and measured this low to this high. That's what this bar is for, to remind me, okay? Let's hold on to that for a moment. You'll see where that comes from in a minute. Actually, I don't know why that popped up yet, but you'll, you'll see where it comes from in a minute. That's where it came up from. Me and Boom Boom, we likey. But even this isn't the trade we're going to talk about. Uh, yeah, I know it's aggressive. This is a, a rare, a very rare time that I can, it is a test and retest, yes. It's a very rare time that I can pick it out at the same time as Boom Boom. But now watch. Even this isn't the one we're going to talk about. But watch what unfolds. Breaking the lows. Just breaking people's backs. Leave a low, pull up. 
Okay. I'll call this a snorkel. At what point did you draw the gold excursion line? Jose, we're not going to go into that today. We'd be here for two hours. And you wouldn't get it anyway. It, it, we're going we're gonna to get to this point. We're not at this point right now. But you can go ahead and play with this if you want. I give who is Moo. Oh, I'm sorry, David, you're new. Um, in the early 1980s, I used to leave order night, overnight orders of a couple billion dollars, which at that time is like leaving an order for a hundred billion dollars now. And somebody said to me one night, you should be leaving your money with Boom Boom. And I said, who? Boom Boom. I said, I don't know who Boom Boom is. Well, he's the head trader at Bank Boomi Pucha in Malaysia. I said, I'm leaving it with Sakamoto-san, whose brother is, you know, the head of uh, intervention at the Bank of Japan. And he said, leave it with Boom Boom. And Sakamoto-san is a personal friend. So I called Boom Boom and talked to him. And he said, oh, you know what, if you want, leave me an order for me. And he filled my order on the dead low to the tick. And I thought, well, you know, he's just trying to get the business. And the next order I filled, I sent him. He filled he filled it on the dead high to the tick. And, you know, we got to know each other for a while. So, not a broker, no. He was a huge trader. He was one of the original five shadow traders, me being one of them. He was the Asian one. I was in America. There was one in Britain. And there were, there were two in several other places. I'm the last one around. So, Boom Boom became a ver very close friend. And at one point he said, you know, you, you, need, you trade too late. You need to learn how to get in earlier. So, we actually put in a squawk box between his trading room and where I traded. And a screen so he could see what I was charting. Because he, he never charted. He traded off a of price action. Like a tape reader. And it took me months and months and months and months before I had even the faintest idea what he was doing. And he, I'd, I'd say, okay, I'm bullish. And he'd say to me, you, 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 you 15 bars too late. What are you thinking? Get faster. So he's a, ment he's, he's a, he's a mentor. Um, his son is a, is a real estate magnet in uh, Thailand. You know the largest buildings in Thailand? At one point, it was the largest, tallest building in the world. Anyway, apparently not. Double range was okay for place to look out for price to run out of energy. Yeah. Yeah, I know that was a nice clue. I'm just looking at price action. That's a good clue, though. All right, so, so we're heading lower. Now I've got this snorkel or periscope bar here pops above the range and it either immediately gets squashed or it starts a series of highs that break prior highs to the left right uh, whoever sent it to me privately Well, Jose, email me a detailed picture. So, let's see what we get out of it. Inside bar. Kind of the opposite bar. The follow-through is going to tell us what happens. No follow-through. We've got as we close on the low, I put a bar out to the right. Now we've got a box. We know that, right, from the work we've been doing. And eating, trying to eat through the bottom of the box. And there's our same frequency. And there's goodbye. Let's do that. So
So if you had put all your eggs in that basket, you've been exploded. So the downside's continuing to work. And if you got short up in this area for whatever reason, or if you got short on the pullback, you've not taken any heat, right? The shorts are getting paid to play here. Whether you like it or not. And this one really hasn't had much boredom. Continue to move to the downside. We pull back up to our multi-pivot line. And bust through. I see I have a line that's moved. Hang on a second. Okay. All right. So here's Al's original flowering. See it? And here's the high of the move. Follow me? I take the same bar, make it easy, and I connect it over here. To double the range. See it? So that's one part of the picture. Just so you can follow the geometry. Well, Dawn. The, the beginning of the flowering to the high. Here's the beginning of the flower. Now double the range. What do you think the target was? Think about it as it unfolds. And also I have some frequency that's going to give me some target. That this is not the trade that we're doing. We haven't got to the trade yet, okay? But you need to see this to understand. So the correction might be a center. Might be. You can explore this as you watch the uh, recording if you want to go further. It's going to take a lot of digging, and it may not be. All right, here's another one. may not be fathomable. Maybe, may not, I don't know. So now, can we see the wake-up call here? See that? See the top, see the top of the range of the wake up call? I'm going to kick that with this area. And you see we're going to go sideways. With me? Just, I'm just doing geometry now. And then I'm going to take this measurement and I'm going to double that. Are you with me? Okay. I'm just doing geometry. I'm just doing measured moves. Just geometry. Simple geometry. By measured moves, I mean 50 to 100. I'm using Euclid. You can see our Here's our downside frequency. We're, cu we're pulling back up now to the halfway point of this move and this multi-pivot line. Looks like we're about to pop it. Turns on a dime, at least for the moment. And just when you're sure that the move is over, So people that were looking for a bottom, picking the bottom, getting in line for the bottom. 
You know, this is the razor that you walk when you try and be boom boom. How do you know that this is the bar and not the bar, right? That's why it's what that's that's why very few people are boom boom. So David, in terms of tape readers, um, you know, and I studied under Amos Hostetter, who knew Jesse Livermore and people like that in the 20s. Actually, 1907, the 1907 stock market. The people that, quote unquote, could read a market just based on price. And, you know, Jesse Livermore quote-unquote claims that he did this, he did that, or whatever. Both Andrews and Amos said a lot of fluff, not much profit. A lot like Gann, a lot of talk, not much money. But I watched Boom Boom do it. And I know what, you know, he died on a plane of a heart attack. I know what he was worth when he died. So I can speak kindly of his abilities. Longingly. How about that? Even better. Squeeze, please. Sure. Does that help? One more. Okay. Uh, well, okay. We didn't go over that part, but okay. Does that help? I'm seeing action reaction horizontal. I don't know, I'd have to ponder that and I'll lose my place. Because I'll tell you what I have in my mind right now is what we're about to do. So, you can think about it, John. I'll think about it afterwards, but I will. I do not understand the note you made, me and Boom Boom. What did you see? I'm not going to go into that because, Al, we don't have time. And you're not ready for it. But I told you guys I'd mark Boom Boom bars. That's a boom boom, and I got that one. I got all of that one. I'll show you the terminus. But you're not ready for it. So it's be like putting dynamite in a child's hands. I'm not going to do it. You can try and study it, but I'm sure I'll we'll show you the geometry of measurement. So now we're at one to one. So. This equals this. Let's let's make both the measurements easier to see. For you and for me. Okay. Zero. I need a hundred percent. Let's make a hundred percent that color. Okay. Now let's make the second one. People having co connections. Per Kareem, if you follow the bars, I'll zoom. I'll squeeze in again. I've showed you already once. I'll show you again. Again, this isn't the trade we're going over again. So I'm not gonna take too much time and answer too many questions about where did you this and where did you that because this isn't the, this isn't what we're playing with okay but we need we need to know where this market came from this high double the range is this low 
okay this middle of the range to the flowering measured sorry this 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 middle of the range to the pause doubled is the same level do you see that can you guys see the measurements now zero a hundred zero a hundred okay you can go back and look at them yourself this is not the trade that we're, we're going to study okay but the measurements important you with me okay we're getting to the trade are there any any questions about where we are are you oriented I know you don't understand how to get short up there and how to and how to take your money out it's not the point the point is are you oriented where we are all right there's no other way for me to make, to show you this trade than to unravel some of this I could have just done it with naked bars but that's not going to help you it sounds like people are having connection problems but or they're coming late I can't tell which all right so we've bottomed we, we've we've doubled two ranges and we're there everybody with me and they're coincident for what that's worth and I don't know what that's worth you'll have to decide what that's worth okay curl down pull back Okay. How many times you've seen, this, seen me do this over and over again? As far as shorts, wouldn't this area be far extended considering our previous trade area? Or is this totally separate from our previous trade? There is no previous trade. We're not, we're not going to talk about this trade, so I want you to orient yourself as if you're flat, okay? Is this totally separate from our previous trade area giving all the rangy action and now looking for a long? I have no idea what you're looking for, Gary. Think of it this way. You sat through this. If you're capable of doing the market geometry and seeing this coincident low, curl down pullback. So the relative strength of that small formation was interesting to you. How many times do you see me do this? Just this curl, curl down pullback. And John, it's hit this coincident low for me. It's curled down to this coincident low, and it's like you know hitting the third rail it's right out of the right out of the box right there are other curl downs but they're they're not coincident with a stretch of the whole move okay now if we blow through this it's meaningless okay let me remind you all of this Not that, this. 
beautiful but deadly okay beautiful but deadly you, at the end of this presentation you should be asking yourself do I want to play with this stuff really sometimes the answer is yes but sometimes the answer should be no profit or no profit third rail yeah all right all right so we've got a curl down to this coincident low you appear to be drawing the frequency line across the closest of the bars just under where you mark pain and gain is that how you always draw your frequencies there I I will be the first to admit David that if you're looking for David if you're looking for a black and white answer you're not gonna find it not if you want to make money and you haven't been here long enough, but I'll tell you what I tell everybody all the time. I can make you a pretty chartist or, you know, a chartist that can get a job as a chartist, or I can teach you how to make money. And if you want to learn how to make money, the charting has a lot of art in it. There's no St. Tim, that's right. Okay? So the answer is I don't, I can't answer your question by saying I always draw it this way, I always do it this way. There's no such thing. As I tell my kids, there's, there is no truth. This is what I see. Coincident bottoms and this curling to the downside. <coughs> it's pleasing to my eye. That's the key. To grab this high and pull it across these low, these closes. That's what's pleasing to my eye. Okay? There's no better exclude, But that doesn't mean the next time. <coughs> if I had a series of highs, but look, I don't. If I had a series of highs that lined up, I probably would grab those, but I don't. But I do have a series of closes. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take a drink. I stalked this same trade on the 60-minute chart, but missed getting filled. That dawn, actually, um, I went back and looked at the 60-minute um, because of a prior trade. But, yeah. It wasn't there very long, was it? Not to front run the trade, but okay. Here we go. So we're testing our maximum excursion. Testing our maximum excursion. Testing our maximum excursion. You can see, David, here. I just take a copy of it and put it in the center and say, you know what? It's got good frequency here. Okay, I like it. It's like a check. And you'll see me do that all the time as well. I'll draw it over here. I'll draw it a prior row. I'll, I'll move it forward. And I'll go, yep, it's got good frequency. I like this line. Because until you, until you use it on data, forward data, you don't know if it's, you know, if you're hallucinating or whether it's a, a really meaningful line. So now the boredom, for those people that were thinking about a bottom in point of fact although it's broadened out it does this broadened out as well and then we had to move down at the moment it could be a cascade lower right <coughs> and David before you ask I'd meet Weekends don't mean anything to me. I don't really care. As long as I have a stop, I'm willing to... They want to take a run on me on on, on Sunday night or my, my Monday, that's fine. Or my Sunday, their Monday, that, that's fine with me. It's okay. Okay. At this point, as we head lower, sorry, I just draw in, copy the frequency down to this bottom and say, are we going to take it out? Because look what we did here. We curled and then blew to the downside. Are we going to take it out? That's what I want to know, isn't it? Or is this a higher low? Okay. In the scheme of things, as I watch this unfold, 
boredom has set in for most people. They're either going to get frisky and take this up, or they're going to dump out of positions. But one way or the other, anybody that's picked bottoms or maybe even picked tops, they're getting bored. And here's our trend barrier. And it's, in David, here's a maximum excursion line for you on two points. Okay? Maybe three. So, are we going to break this barrier or not? Follow me? Everybody, anybody else follow me? Okay. Trying, trying. Backing up, trying. All right, we test the bottom. Nine pips. So separation. Five to seven is minimum separation. I like the separation. I'm in. If I can afford to stop. A lot of you want the barrier bar to be broken before you get in, correct? Or maybe even this top taken out, correct? No, I'm not in on that bar yet. I just put my order in. But most of you probably want this top to be taken out, yes? Well, again, Big Sean, beautiful but deadly, okay? I don't know if you want to take this trade, ever. Need screen to update slow connection. Uh, well, tell Petra, can I zoom in? Did you get the zoom? Okay, well, you're going to have to watch the recording because other people are going to, okay, because other people can't uh, wait for your internet connection. You know, i got people that are going to have to go to the office in 15 and 5 minutes probably. So, <clears throat> I've got the order in now. Not really because you already did one of the criteria by taking out the prior swing high with the level used for that top of that first heavy dark red. Okay. That's enough for me, but it may not be enough for everybody else. Timmy says that this excursion is enough for him to buy against here. But for a lot of you, you want these highs to get taken out. Not me. I'm ready to trade. But okay. Just depends on, you know, on what you're looking for. We've talked about this before. The, the more confirmation you want, the more it costs. Took out prior swing high to the left over here. So, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Okay, I can afford it easily. See it? I'm buying. This is... The, this is how long it takes to buy $30 billion. I am buying. Price moves away from me. I get, you know, I get quite a bit, but price moves away from me. We're coming close to the barrier. We touch the barrier and fail. And now we're actually, I get all I want and more. If you look at the bar. And we, again, we close about 10 or 12 pips off the low. See it? That's how, that's how long it takes to buy $30 billion. Okay. Now the question is, can we take out the barrier and or can the low red frequency line hold? And this now we've got this blue advanced multi-pivot line. So we've got all the possibilities marked out here, right?
there's the there's the space here's the range extension this is the flowering coming up <coughs> excuse me you decide if you saw this I'm putting in this trade now if you saw this in the hat you had the cojones to take this trade what are you playing for the moon eighty eight ten I like that squeeze in more you're looking at too much data okay there you go me and boom boom line okay everybody affix your number to this Okay. Higher low maybe? Well, you don't have to tell me, just keep it in your mind. Higher low maybe? Well, we would only know if we take out the barrier line, right? Misread my own chart, 8815 was my target. That's fine. Maybe we're taking it out. Okay, looks like we've taken it out. Well, so you want confirmation? We're beginning to see confirmation, but will you be able to get into the market? Uh, let's do an easy one. Now you've got your confirmation. Yeah, but nobody wanted to get in down here because we haven't take, we got we haven't got any confirmation, right? Now that we're up here, of course, everybody says, "Oh God, I should be getting along," because they've got their confirmation now. But I you, believe me, I couldn't have given them away here, right? I know I'm right. <laughs> That's why I can buy that many down there because nope, everybody's like, this is just going to roll over, man. This ain't happening. All right, so let's see what happens. Rejected at the top. <clears throat> Testing, uh, here's our new advanced multi pivot line. First test of the median line, but no separation. Now we're through the median line. So Dawn is not going to trade this median line now, right, Dawn? Regain the median line, break the median line. Anybody want to vote this median line down now at this point? Maybe we should shift it. Well, son of a gun, look what the modified shift gives you. I guess I'm not completely crazy, am I? The modified shift is often the AC point of these maximum excursion lines. Although I grabbed this one, which is not the AC line, long before you could have drawn in the modified shift. But in the end, it's the AC line of the modified shift. Do you see it? I drew it in over here, but in the end, it became the it it generated the AC of the modified shift okay everybody follow so in essence I'll leave that in in essence I have I generated the the median line long long before it was before the pivots formed okay 
is this a higher low how about that how about this bar another signature bar or is it going is it just a wash and there's no stop yeah, on the, on the shift unfortunately there's one place to get in right here where nobody wants to get in bob don't you think Top of the maximum excursion line looks great, doesn't it? I don't have any geometry here. Top of the line should turn. a little wild but a nice pullback leave a low close near the high put in an advanced multi-pivot line is this a higher low dr. Gary are you out of here okay I'll see you in uh, about an hour buddy Higher low. I like the closes on all three bars. How about you guys? Sell, sell, sell. Looks like somebody's trying to suck it up. Higher high. There's the signature bar again. Back to test the frequency bar. Frequency line, testing, testing, closing on our high, leave a new advanced multi-pivot line. An advanced multi-pivot line, David, is when we make a high and then don't follow through. We just project it forward, and so often it ends up being a beautiful multi-pivot line. And we can draw it from the first bar. We don't even need to see the second, third, or fourth bar. little practice, you can just throw them out there. Is this a higher low? There's the signature bar right there. There's the follow through. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. We'll find out in a second. Apparently something's moved on me. We're at the high of the frequency. Trying to get through. There it is. Our pullback. Let me fix that. I don't know how long it's supposed to be, but we'll fix it when we get there. <coughs> and this should be a high. I'm missing some lines here. Like I said, I didn't have much time to check this morning. Okay. Is this a high or low? The excursion is doing a nice job, isn't it? Yeah. And by the way, can you see how you could have boxed it? You get in long. Can you see how you could have boxed in profits all the way? Never any risk on this trade, was there? Break above the advanced multi-pivot line and, in this case, our frequency line. Got to put a stop in. because we're boxing in profits leave a new high would you have had stops beneath the higher bottoms as they occurred you're watching my stops David these green you're watching them pop look watch it pop these actually come from the gray beards moving up stops my my brokers that this is their mark for me when I wake up. You, hey, your stops move to here. Right now, I'm a, I'm dead asleep. So, 
No, because we're getting close to, you'll see, you'll see why. We're getting close to my target now, so I'm starting to get aggressive, Timmy. Also, and I'll have a comp, ask that question again in a minute. Did you originally scope it as a 4 to 1 risk reward trade? Ask that when we're finished, Don, please. That's part of the deadly but beautiful part. Okay, we break out. We've, we've moved up our lows, our, our, our prof, profit targets, probably. Profit stops, excuse me. We'll leave it a nice advanced multi pivot line again. And David, we can draw it the moment we don't get follow through, then we just extend it in space. So there's our new box. We've got the lows here and the highs here. Are we leaving a lower high now? If so, another stop. See it? There's the box. If this is a higher low, the moment we take it out, new stop. Everybody get this? Can you see my profit order sitting there? So if I'm this close, I can't let it back up on me. Out. Don, you're actually dead on. I thought the 50%, which is Really, the beginning of this, you know, we have these double pane bars right in the center. Okay, now, it is beautiful, but let me ask you a question, Re Rebecca. Let, let's stop. This, this is the trade we want to talk about today, okay? And price does fluctuate. This is very, for me, this was very tradable, okay? At least on this day. Right? But what's, what is this in the scheme of things? Okay, we got this down move. We missed the wash, the prop wash, but we also got the huge down move before. Yeah, Kareem's got it. Isn't this a pendulum pullback? If you miss, if you take this short or this long and then miss the trend short, is that wise? Generally, no. I mean, you know, sometimes it's a, the that move back down is a failure, but if you, if you can see it unfolding and say, big short, stay out of the way, nice short, which is even longer than this, pendulum pullback coming, the pendulum pullback comes, you can trade it, that's fine, and you know it's. Look, it's nothing to sniff at. I don't. I'm. I'm not. It's not the question I'm asking you. Uh, this is now tactics we're talking about. Risking 25 to make 140. Nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. We like to do it every day, right? It's not the trade. It's the, if I get involved in this, if the trend resumes, will I miss that trade? That's the thing. Now, some people, and I'm often one of them, are able to trade this, this, and be ready for this. It's always knowing where you are in the cycle, but Kareem, it's also knowing what you're capable of. 
okay if you're not capable of selling changing gears buying changing gears selling it's a it's a rare skill is the same is the same pattern just appeared on the most recent low repeatable patterns I I'm sorry I don't understand the question you mean it's the same pattern Well, I'm not to the right yet, though. Um, I can usually chart it, but not often trade it. Okay. If you had a target of which 50, BJ? I'm sorry. I got too many people. I'm juggling too many people. Timmy says, real light attachment to positions and strong attachment to feeling the bigger flow. Yeah, the problem is a lot of times... Let, let's say you you miss this by five or ten pips you know it's five or ten pips short of this then you're trying to figure out how to get out of this gracefully meanwhile the trend resumes and you're you're caught in that juggling act that that's where you can get into trouble it's most people can't cut and run It's easier if you are very intimate with a market. That's definitely true. That's why I, Don, how many times have I said to you and to everybody else, three markets, four markets, no more than five. You must have thought about a short there at 50% if you had a sell there. Mm hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, now I get your, now, now I get your comment. Okay. Yep. So are we, are we good with questions before I move on? New Year's resolution only do two. <laughs> okay. Don, I, th I started this year th thinking that I was really going to have trouble trading. Speaking of markets, Tim, it's been some time since you've talked about working in the bonds. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, I've put a self-imposed ban on talking about the bonds, Timmy, because, um, Oh, I'll be frank with you guys. The Chinese were very ups the Chinese and some other people were very upset about me cornering gold. And they're concerned that when the bonds break I'm gonna push and push and push and push and push. So that's the that's the one linchpin that I think would be pretty easy to hurt. I'd be, be pretty easy to hurt some people in the bond market if it, if it started to show signs of weakness. There'd be no place for them to go. No place to hide. They're all going to throw up. So I'm trying to keep a low profile. Didn't, I'm not saying I'm not going to trade it, but I'm trying to keep a low profile. Um, at this point, um, it's become fairly common knowledge in the larger circles, larger trader circles that I did the gold corner. Yeah. And it wasn't me. I, I, you know, there aren't that many people that watch market geometry, but, and it wasn't the Greybeards. They weren't my brokers then. I guess it was the Chinese and the Bank of England, but I don't know. It hasn't hurt me so far, except that I tried to take one gold trade earlier this year, and I got basically one contract off, and it fell $60, $70. So I just took my profits back. I felt like Bill Shepard. It's kind of funny. But I don't think the risk, I mean, I think there's risk in the in gold, but I think the big move, and it won't. it's not this week, probably won't even be this year, is in the bonds. But, boy, people are nervous. So anyway, that's why to me, I'm even if I'm trading and I'm keeping a low profile, I'm not I'm not talking about it. Sorry. I might if I find an innocuous one, I might talk about it. That was worth the class today so alone. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's let's just real quickly see what happens here. Notice that we leave an outside bar lower. Everybody see it? 
I'm out. Reach my target, out, clear head. With me? And we're not here to talk about this trade, the potential of this trade coming up, but but I'll but I'll play it forward for you. And there's I, there are some markings on it. Okay, maybe we'll cover it on another session. We pull down as we pull back up, but close in the middle. Here's our pull down and our curl, David. You've seen that before now, right? Ain't no mystery. It's a fine. I'm very fond of it. It's not a trend line. Okay. We pull back to our our very first. I'm going to call this a swing low. This very first pullback that we were hiding stops under. We pull and stop and then start to turn back up. You know, I didn't think about this, but well, I have to grab the right line. That's why I didn't think of it. Let's see if that's the right line. That's not the right line either. See how many lines are on this world? Let's try it on here. There we go. I didn't think of this. He's not bad, huh? Double the range. Okay. Double, just double the range of the range. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad for a visual. Okay, so anyway, just hit me as I was looking at this. All right, so here's my, my curl. Extend it forward. We pull back to our first, if you want to call this a swing low, that's fine. Let me mark that further out. Oh, fine. Be that way. And I can't. <sighs> Too many. This see how it is changed the way we do bars now, and I, they're hard to grab. So unfortunately, I can't grab this one to lengthen it. So never mind. I'll redraw it later. All right. So that's where we stop. I connect this frequency with this low. See it? It's pretty simple. Don't know if it means beans. And you got to get used to that, David. Don't be afraid to draw stuff. Don't be afraid to take a trade and lose. I mean, you got to play. got to be in it to win it. Low holds pretty well. Now we get another interesting move up. We do close in the middle of the range, but we got this nice move up. You're great with crayons, good. But that doesn't hold out. Well, we're right back up. All right, so now we're testing the prior highs. How about that? Everybody got it? See it? Could you see that frequency as these two bars were being made? Boom. New lows. 
etc. Okay, so we're pretty close to real time now. All right, so now you're free to explore this trade if you want with a median line or these lines or whatever. Here's the question though. Beautiful but deadly. Let's leave it like that. <coughs> if we have unfolding downward legs that are giving us two, three hundred pips at a shot. If you are not adept at being short, then long, then short, then long, then short, then long. Is this a trade that you should be tra trying to take? First of all, I'm not sure that it's that easy to take, but let's assume that you have the ability to take it. Is this a trade that you should be stalking? That That is the discussion today. That's what I want. That's what I want you to think about after the session today. What if you're What if you're adept at long and then short and then long and then short, and you can see these entries? Should you be stalking these trades? It's a personal thing. If you're adept and in tune with the market, sure. Make sure you have your stops. Well, I no, we don't trade without stops. Cream, that's a given. If you get stopped out, uh, let's say you're a confirmation person. So we break above the highs here, and you find a way in here, and you get stopped out. Can you? get out and turn over here the only way to become proficient is to trade them Paul I would tell you that some people will never be able to trade them at this point not a chance would be nice down the road but for now I'll attempt to see feel the flow and stay with the current trend um, Paul uh, I, I grew up um, in an institutional trading room where the guys that I was around They matured when the dollar was only going down. It was the Jimmy Carter years. And their their joke, but it really wasn't funny, was you come in, you get short the dollar against anything. If you take any heat, just go take a crap. When you come back, you'll be fine. And that's really how they traded. But when Reagan got in office and, the, and he went for a strong dollar policy, it was so ingrained in them they couldn't change. They were not bi-directional in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Now, I'm lucky because when I started, which was actually before the Carter years, but I wasn't in an institution, I wasn't smart enough to equate the two, and I was a very two-dimensional trader, and I always have been. But I watched a whole room full of guys. One survived... He went on to be a floor trader and then became a Morgan Stanley partner. And now he manages a very small fund. Everybody else? No, I take that back. Two survived. Him, and then you hear me talk about Gail, who says, Jesus, if you just come back, I'll get out and be a good girl, who now trades for the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Most people don't know they have a trading desk, but she's on their trading desk. So, but six of them went from being really kings and queens to out of the market gone so for me it's about knowing the chip shots and knowing the bigger moves i don't know don i don't know if i'd call this a chip shot though i mean you and i you've seen my chip shots this is a nice organized climb higher and I, i'm not telling you not to try and take this trade i just want to spark the thought in everybody's mind that's all okay I'm with Don, trade within your ability. Of course, the the rub is being able to gauge your own ability. Yeah, that is the rub, isn't it? What can you do? What were my clues to target? Uh, target was simple. It's a no-brainer. Wake-up call. Pain. I just connected these 
two wide range bars it's almost like this is an island top if you took these out and left these as gaps this was an island top do you see that um, how can I denote that I have to figure out a way to do that for next time. Does everybody know what I mean by an island top? It's not connected. So if you, I talk about stick men. If you knocked out this stick and you knocked out this stick, you got an island top sitting here. Where's your target? It's at the island, the bottom of the island top or the top of real land. See it? How about that? Fills it, kills it. It's erase the bar, erase the bar concept. Yep, absolutely good. Is the stop size minimum and maximum the same on the 20 minute? In the 60 minute? No. No, 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 no. John, Don, you have to look at your ATRs. Twenty minutes, thirty minute maximum. I think I use sixty or sixty five on a sixty, but I'd have to go look. It's double the ATR. I know I know yesterday it was running twenty five or twenty six. It's got to be at least double the ATR. Volatility's bigger out there. Even on Aussie, the volatility's bigger out there. So, if you want to pay for less pivots, then you have to pay for bigger stops, unfortunately. So, all right. So that was that. I mean, you know, the next part's fun. This prior part was really cool, but this is the question. Okay. I'm treating you guys as professional traders now. The question is, I call you into a meeting, I look at your trades. Is this a trade you should be taking? That's the message. Okay? I want you to think about it. How did you assign the last top frequency line? what what color is it I told you I'm not going to talk about the golds I already I already said that Jose you have to listen as I talk we're not talking about this trade maybe we'll talk about this trade on another day I'm not going to talk about the prior trade it's not good for your health okay you'll have to trust me on that if you can't trust me as your professor or sensei that can't help you um love your frequency drawing today okay cool I'm, I'm glad rebecca you guys have to trust me there are times when it's not right you're not ready it's you know i won't give it to you wax on wax off how about that sometimes you're not ready you're not ready for the street fight this one on the left eesh. but the frequency is there and the geometry is there and you needed the geometry to understand why this was important, which spawned this. So now you know what to think about. This won't be the last time we'll t have this discussion. I'm not telling you not to think about this. I'm just telling, or not to trade this. I'm telling you to think about it. That's all. So have it. What is today? Thursday? I'm lost. Hey, Don. Good to be part. Good to see you again. Okay. So happy Thursday. Friday where you are, Don. And um, I'll see you in the midday tomorrow. All right. Take care.